The Japanese American civil rights activist Yuri Kochiyama was born and raised in San Pedro, California. She and her family were among 120,000 Japanese Americans on the West Coast who were rounded up in the wave of anti Japanese hysteria following the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Here, she recalls her experiences in the detention camps. I was red, white, and blue when I was growing up. I taught Sunday school, and I was very, very American, but also, also very provincial. We were just kids rooting for our high school. I was 19 at the time of the evacuation. I just graduated from junior college, and I was looking for a job. I didn't realize how different the school world was from the work world. In the school world, I never felt racism. But when I got into the work world, things were very difficult. This is 1941, just before the war. I finally did get a job, though, at a department store. But for us back then, that was a big thing because I don't think they ever hired an Asian in a department store before. I tried because I saw a Mexican friend who had gotten a job there. <laughs> Everything changed for me on the day Pearl Harbor was bombed. On that very day, December 7th, the FBI came and they took my father. He'd just come home the day before from the hospital. For several days, we didn't know where they had taken him. And then we found out that he was taken to the federal prison at Terminal Island. Overnight, things changed for us. Most Japanese Americans were told they had to give up their jobs, whatever they did, and told they had to leave. The edict for 9066, President Roosevelt's edict for evacuation, was in February 1942. We were moved to a detention center that April. We were sent to an assembly center in Arcadia, California. It was the largest assembly center on the West Coast, having nearly 20,000 people. There were many other smaller centers, each holding about 600 people. And there were assembly centers all along the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. There were many, many assembly centers, but ours was the largest. <coughs> Most assembly centers were fairgrounds or racetracks. So many of us lived in stables, and they said you could take what you could carry. I was so red, white, and blue, I could not believe this was happening to us. America would never do a thing like this to us. This is the greatest country in the world, so I thought maybe this would only be for a short while, maybe just a couple of weeks, and then they would let us go back. In the beginning, no one realized how long this would go on. I didn't feel the anger that much because I thought maybe this is the way we could show our love for our country and that we should not make too much fuss or noise and we should just abide by what was asked of us. I'm a totally different person now than I was back then. I was naive about so many things. The more I think about it, the more I realize how little you learn about American history. It's just what they want you to know. We always <coughs> called the camps relocation centers when we were there. Now we feel it is apropos to call them concentration camps. Of course, they are not the same as the concentration camps of Europe. Those we feel were death camps. Concentration camps are a concentration of people placed in an area disempowered and disenfranchised. So, it is apropos to call what I was in a concentration camp. Historically, Americans have always been putting people behind walls. First, there were the American Indians who were put on reservations. Africans, their lives on the plantations. Chicanos doing migratory work and the kind of camps they lived in. And even, too, the Chinese who worked on the railroads, where there were almost isolated, dispossessed people. This empowered. And I feel those are the things we should fight against so they won't happen again. This whole period of what the Japanese went through is important. 
if we can see the connections of how often this happens in history, we can stem the tide of these things from happening again.